Hello and welcome. My name is Sarah Smith and I'm all the way in Cambridge, Massachusetts coming from Maine and I'm excited to be here with you guys today and really just share a little bit about my introduction and sort of my journey into home-based business. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, my background is in massage therapy and in the healing arts. I've been a body worker for about 16 years and I've owned my own business for the same amount of time. You know, I love helping people. I love spending the time uh, working um, on bodies, helping people, you know, kind of transform their life from a physical and emotional perspective as well. And about five years ago, you know, we had a health crisis sort of land in our laps, my husband and I. Um, we were healing from Lyme disease. And this is when I really started uh, exploring home-based business. Because this is the deal, if, if, if my husband's hands, who's a carpenter, if his hands were not with a hammer and nail and building houses, he wasn't making any money, okay? When my hands were not on bodies in my massage room and me working one-on-one -on -one right there, the money stopped coming in. And this became a real issue when he was out of work and I was out of work. So, you know, I never really, um, had an interest in home-based business because I never really understood exactly the power of finding a really good one. So I'm here today to share with you a little bit about the reasons why sort of a home-based business uh, is a good thing these days. Number one, uh, for, for anyone, it's a really great way to, if you want to earn a six-figure income, it's up to you, right? You actually have that capability to um, you know, to, an uncapped income, I should say. And for women out there, I'll give you a really good statistic. 6% of all women out there in the working world make a six-figure income. About 85% of that 6% do it in a home-based business. How about that? Uh, and, you know, it's another reason why a good home-based business is great is there's really a global need for a supplemental in income these days. 95% of people can't retire right now. I think, you know, when you walk into a Walmart and you see somebody who's 80 handing you a bag or a cart, there is something wrong with that, okay? So retirement in our 401ks are not matching up to what it's actually gonna take for us. You know, anyone who, who has just a nine to five job to be able to retire. There's also a need to be connected, a need to be connected in the world. Um, I think people are really looking at their purpose and their passion and really what they want to bring to the world. You know, it's, you know, there's a global need to feel connected. I know some of the uh, countries that have the best health span and lifespan, they all, um, they have great community bases. Like they share dinner with their friends and family. You know, they drink wet red wine, they have a Mediterranean diet. But the key fact is that people are feeling connected and that's something that people crave, especially in today's world where everything is technology-based. Home-based business is actually a trend. It's, it's the gig economy. And when we're talking about the gig economy, we're talking about, okay, when you're done with work, at the end of the day and at the end of the month, our you really making enough money to make ends meet. People are resorting to Uber, they're resorting to Airbnb, they're really trying to kind of take control of their own financial health in ways that are entrepreneurial. Forbes magazine actually quoted that, you know, the best uh, sort of investment in your future for retirement is picking a home-based business that you really resonate with, that you're really passionate about and sticking with that. The other uh, key point here is that there's unparalleled growth. In other words, there's no cap to what you can actually make in the industry, okay? Um, and when we think of a residual income, a residual income is like J.K. Rowling wrote Harry Potter, and every time a wand sells, or a bedspread, or uh, you know, a book sells, she makes a residual income. She wrote the book once. And 
You know, I think Elvis has, you know, is still making royalties off of his music. So there are very few ways that you can actually make a residual income where you actually build the house once and it pays you over and over again. So there's more flexibility in that. So I want to just talk a little bit about how to vet, how to sort of put through the ringer what a good uh, home-based business would be for you. And when I started looking into it, I know I landed on a great one because I was taught that there are six key components to uh, choosing the best home-based business for yourself. The first is that it's really, <laughs> when you're making a decision, we tend to make an emotional-based decisions when we're looking at a business opportunity. And when people get really excited, maybe about a product or a service that they really love, they may not look a little bit deeper into uh, the key items that you really want to look for to make sure that you have success with this. The first is the, is the company. You want to know, is this company publicly traded? Is it privately held? Um, and I do know that if a company is publicly traded, it's a really good sign because the level of transparency uh, that, you know, that you can really research. Um, you know, do you really want to align with a company that has really good ethics and morals and, you know, it has a good track record? This is a great way for you to do your research. If a company is privately held, they may not show, you know, that particular number of, let's say, distributors in a company. And that's really important to know. Also with the company, it's good to know whether they're in the growth phase. Are you looking at a company that's already a billion dollar company? Or are you actually looking at a company that's ground floor? You want to make sure that when you're, you're really looking at the, you know, the sales and, and kind of the track record, have they gone through that initial white water uh, of their first 200 million? You know, are they on a positive trajectory for growth? Another thing you want to look at is, you know, from a company perspective, is do you resonate with the company story? I know, you know, you need to be passionate. Is, does the company story resonate with where your excitement is? Do you really believe in the product or the service or the mission of what you're involved with? Because, you know, when you're looking at a home-based business, you are the face of your excitement. You are that, um, you, you know, your belief and your passion is really what attracts people to learn more, you know, about what you're up to in a home-based business. You also uh, really want to take a look at the leadership of the company. And has the leadership steered the company in the right direction? Do they have um, a track record of, let's say, bringing a $200 million company to a billion? Do they have a track record of, um, of success? You know, so you want to really look at the leaders of the company and make sure you resonate with them as well. Now, from a branding perspective, um, is your product or service tied to a sports team? Are they tied to um, celebrities? And from a branding perspective, is it something that is, is really getting out there and really being backed by some of the top people in the industry from an entertainment perspective, you know, um, that's very important as well. So that would be it for the company. The next is trends. And from a trends perspective, you really uh, want to, you know, when I think of trends, um, they're long standing. Fads, for example, you know, <laughs> I'm a product of the 80s, I will say. I had the feathered haircut, I had the jelly bracelets, and I, I mean, you name it, the, um, you know, I'm not wearing jelly bracelets now and my hair is not feathered. So, <laughs> trends are something that withstand the test of time, and health is really a big one. Ideally, from a company's perspective, you really wanna know if you're um, ahead of the trends. And that's actually where you want to be. You want to be ahead of where the trends are. You also, um, you know, Paul Zane Pilsner, for example, he 
is a famous economist. He's known for projecting uh, trends for you know major um, heads of state, and he's just he's got a bunch of books out there written around that um, exact topic. And what he says is, if you have home-based business and um, and health and wellness, those two trends are going to produce those two trends together are going to produce the most um, self-made millionaires in the next 10 years. And what he's saying is the next 10 million new millionaires are going to come from the sort of the, uh, the bringing together of home-based business and health and wellness. When you're looking at a company, you're also looking at, um, you know, for example, in a home-based business, you're looking at creating a network for a particular company or service. And usually the breakdown of the company comes in the form of a distributor or a customer. And what you want to make sure of is that there are more customers than distributors. And that there's actually, um, I think the law now in home-based business is that 70% of the company needs to come from a distrib comes would need to come from a customer base. 30% needs to come from a distributor. Uh, platform. So these, um, and the Direct Sellers Association, the DSA.org, is a great resource to really check out whether your company um, is in alignment with what all the rules and the regulations of the industry. There are 20,000 network marketing and direct sales companies out there, of which only 200 uh, are actually certified and verified. Um, so that's a great way. So trends and kind of the layout of the company is very important. The next kind of area that you want to look at are products. The products for, you know, which you are, you know, represent, product or service, you, you know, you really want to make sure that they're unique, uh, that maybe they're patent protected, they could be science-based, uh, they're highly consumable if it is a product. You know, you really want to make sure that what you're looking at from a product base is that the that the rate in which your sort of monthly income is based is really kind of a unique and highly consumable kind of turnover from a monthly auto ship standpoint. Because that is really what creates a residual income. For example, we all know Tupperware, right? Tupperware had patents on their products for a long time. And I know I still have <laughs> Tupperware from my grandmother that um, is still in really great shape, right? So there's only so much Tupperware you can have in a house, and there's only so much monthly turnover that you can with, you know, have with Tupperware. Same with knives or uh, vacuum cleaners, those kinds of things. So you want to look at the product or service and really figure out if it's something that can be um, highly consumable and sort of a quick turnover every month. The system. The system is really important when you are uh, looking for the perfect fit. And the system really takes place with uh, the culture of the company, the amount of support that you get. And systems don't fail. People fail systems, right? So when we, let's think about a really great system in place. The Golden Arches, McDonald's, for example. What is their number one product? It's not the Big Mac. It's not the large fry. It's actually the franchise itself. People, whoever buy, you know, whoever's interested in buying a franchise for McDonald's has to go to Hamburger University and learn how to make a hamburger that tastes the same in San Antonio as it does in Singapore right? That's the su success. There's a system in place that duplication happens really easily. So, for example, when you, you want to make sure that you have a team of people that, you, that are supporting you um, in your journey to really launch a business. I think in home-based businesses, that's the toughest thing. You, you receive your business in a box, you open it up, and then you don't know what to do. You don't know how to move forward. And I think it's super important to know who you're working with, if there's a system for success in place and what that actually means. And when you are really involved and you get the business of 
network marketing or direct sales, what you really want to focus on, you, your goal is to really duplicate very simple actions and help people succeed with that. As human beings, we tend to complicate things quite a bit, right? So the simple duplication of creating a large network and helping people, you know, kind of plug into something simple is, is really the success you find. We want, I think in this day and age where I know for me being an entrepreneur and running sort of my own business, you know, traditional business, I know I'm the hub. I've been the hub of the success. And so being able to step out of that is really nearly impossible. So the goal with a good home-based business is that you're going to be able to step out in three to five years and you know, allow sort of the fruits of your labor, labor to pay you for generation. I mean, that's ideally what you're looking at with a home-based business. Lastly, um, I want to talk about timing. Two points left, timing and compensation. Timing. The most important uh, part of any home-based any home business is actually the timing. So when we're talking about um, real estate, we're talking about location, right? Location is the key success to a great real estate buy. When you're looking at a home-based business, you want to be in first. You don't want to be late to the party. You know, you hear so many times where people have had you know, an unsuccessful run, or my grandfather, he, he joined Amway at the beginning and he found no success, right? And that's because maybe he was late to the party. Maybe the system wasn't in place for him to succeed. Because when you're looking at something where you have all six components lined up, it's really you that needs to change to make a success with the, with the business, right? So when you're talking about timing, I'll just give you a breakdown from a, a, a direct sales standpoint. And this was um, studied by Harvard Business School and the Direct Sellers Association. When you're looking at a great network marketing opportunity, the best way to take a look at it is through the Peter Drucker S-curve. I don't know if you remember that from your economics classes, but when you were, um, Peter Drucker stud studied over 70,000 um, businesses, brick and mortar, every kind of business there is. And he found that there is a trajectory for success for every single one that follows the same sort of curve. And in the beginning, you have a great idea, you're really excited, you dump all your time and your energy, your money, passion, your last pennies into this idea. And you go through what's called the valley of death, okay? That's usually in your first three to five years of starting any business, okay? And you hope that you break even. You hope that you, um, you know, come out um, breaking even, right? You're toasting. Because 85 to 90% of all businesses fail within that first three to five years. Now, when you break even and you're on a positive trajectory for growth, branding happens. Branding is when your product or service starts to become a household name. After branding hits, there's something that is beautiful. It's called momentum. Momentum happens once and it happens fast. That's where 80% of a company's success happens. And that is where the company really, um, you know, the company pays 80% of its commissions to the ground floor leadership that helps drive that momentum in the first 80% of the sales that, of that growth. Then 2 to 7% stabilization, that's where the billion dollar marks happen. That's where... You know, any company, you take Apple, for example, they hit, as soon as the iPod hit and they went into expanding their technology base to multiple devices, it hit momentum. It might not, it hit momentum and then it hit stabilization. It might not be the best today to uh, invest in Apple stock, but we use their products, right? So when you're looking at network marketing, you're looking at the billion dollar companies, the stabilized companies, if you're joining one of those, your chances of success are really limited because um, you have to be a really good salesperson, okay? So when you're looking at Amway, Tupperware, Mary Kay, Pamper Chef, you name it, any of the billion dollar companies, you're looking at 
about two to five million distributors per market, okay? That is a lot of competition. That's called saturation. When you're, when you're looking at 500,000 distributors and you're looking at a cutting edge opportunity because those 500,000 distributors they're going to help capture that last piece of the momentum. And so it's, a, it's still a good time. You still have success, but you really want to look at those numbers. Now, at 135,000 distributors, that's where you have a once-in-a-lifetime business opportunity. That's actually where branding starts. It's where momentum takes off in any company. So what you want to do is you want to find out when you're joining a team or find something you're passionate about, where are they in the saturation point with numbers of distributors? That's a really important fact to know. So if you find a company that has less than 135,000 distributors per market, you have found a really great home. Um, so the timing is key. The timing is absolutely key. Lastly, when I want to what I want to talk about is the compensation. So the compensation really needs to be a good fit for you as well. When I started looking at home-based businesses and really trying to figure it all out, I learned that there are two kinds of business, you know, compensation plans that you can plug into. One is a unilevel, which really allows you to build your business at the rate in which you want to. There's no pressure. You can move slow, you can move fast. It's kind of for somebody who wants to build this over time and maybe has this as sort of a side hustle. Then there's the binary compensation plan. And this is, you know, this is really for somebody who wants <laughs> more than just a side hustle, but wants you know, a fast-paced, um, go get them, you know, working with the team. But you really you're really pressured in a way to move fast with it. So, you know, you just want to look at those two things and you want to look at how many ways that a company actually pays you. Um, you know, just to kind of wrap up, I, um, when I was introduced to the, uh, the company and the opportunity that I'm involved with now, I've been in home-based home business now for five years. I'm having tremendous success. I'm one, in the top 1% of the income earners with this company. And it is, you know, one of the most amazing journeys for several reasons. One is that if you, if you want something that has purpose, if you want something that uh, pushes you to grow on a personal level, if you are looking for a team approach but really want to be your own boss, um, it's, it's a really fantastic way to go. And, you know, I've been lucky enough to be introduced to um, a company and a technology that is really ahead of the trends right now, that is really ground floor, that is really um, you know, something, it's, it's, it's sort of the shining star right now in home-based businesses. And um, you know, honestly, that if when you're looking at any home-based business, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to run it through the six key components, um, you know, company, product, trends, system, timing, compensation, and make sure that all of them have check plus in those boxes. So that is a wrap for the uh, ways that you can vet um, and really choose a great home-based business. And one of the top, and some of the top reasons why it's a good idea today in today's economy and really for the future of your financial health. So as I've been exploring the, you know, the, the pros and cons of home-based business and finding the right uh, business opportunity, I've also, my background is in health and wellness. And my passion has been trying to help people heal. Um, and through body work, through everything I can do from that one-to-one, one-on-one -one kind of um, 
client to um, body worker standpoint, I've really tried to help my clients. And what I found is that everything I'm running across when I'm looking at a person's health are things that I can't really fix. I've got to be honest. I cannot massage people's genes. I cannot lower their levels of oxidative stress. I cannot do what it takes at the cellular level to actually increase a person's um, level of health as they age. So when I started researching home-based businesses and really looking into this, I had mentioned that I was healing from, you know, um, on the path healing from Lyme disease and really looking for a better way to heal. Um, really, I was turned on to, um, the concept in the, the new science of nutrigenomics. Nutrigenomics is how all natural compounds affect our genes. It's, a, it's around how food affects our DNA. And I, I was really fascinated with biohacking our biology. I mean, how cool is that? Biohacking is, it's really, um, biohacking is how to um, really taking a complex environment like our, our bodies and sort of change the outcome and the result. So it's such a buzzword. Here I am in Cambridge. Hacking. It's, it's <laughs> biohacking is, is huge. Life hacks, brain hacks. Everybody's talking about a way to live life better a way to have a better desired outcome and getting there in the quickest way possible. So when we're talking about the future of prevention and we're talking about um, really aging and, and really increasing our health span, there are very few things out there that are actually doing this. And I just want to cover one. One is NRF2 activation kind of a new concept. NRF2 activation is actually, it's a, it's a pathway in the body. It stands for nuclear, nuclear factoid reactor two. Kind of sciencey. I'm just a massage therapist, but I've become fascinated at the fact that if we combine a specific ratio of herbs to activate our own body's way to heal itself at the cellular level, how cool is that? How cool is it to be able to make our own antioxidants versus taking them? How great is it to make our own anti-inflammatory enzymes versus taking Advil and munching on <laughs> all of the anti-inflammatory things that are out there? Because when we talk about disease and we talk about aging, inflammation is the key, key factor to uh, to deal with as we age. And if we can activate our own body's way to heal itself at the cellular level, why not? I've learned that NRF2 activation is why eating a, an array of colorful foods is really good for us. Because it activates this protein messenger that's tied to our de defense mechanism for aging. NRF2 is also why exercise is good. When you think about when you're outside exercising, why is it that exercise is so good for you? Well, because the NRF2 protein is being activated so that your body can actually heal quicker at a cellular level. So what I'm learning is that these key pathways to longevity in our bodies is really where the future is going. Now, currently, there are pharmaceutical companies that are making drugs, for example, the MS drug, Tecfidera. Tecfidera is an, a synthetic version of an NRF2 activator. It's $50,000 a year. There's a slew of side effects. But what science is showing is that if we can all, nat you know, all naturally activate this protein, our bodies can actually do the work. So the company that I'm representing and the breakthrough that, that I have my hands on just as sort of you know, a representative of this company has cutting edge products 
that are hacking our biology. And so I'm just super excited to be in the hub of innovation right here in Cambridge um, to be able to talk about this because I think all the geneticists that are out there, all the people that are out there looking for this don't even know it exists right now, that there's actually a product that uh, all naturally can, can, you know, it's about biohacking, not hijacking, right? Hijacking your body is what, you know, processed foods are doing. It's what the environment of, you know, high levels of, you know, um, air pollution and, and the environments that we live in, right? So to actually have our hands on something that will activate our own body's way to heal itself is, you know, is just a true gift. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap this session up. I just want to thank everybody for joining me today. And with just a little bit of knowledge, you know, just wanted to throw a little knowledge out there and, you know, share with people a little bit uh, about the future of, I believe, where business is heading uh, and creating networks, uh, inspiring the entrepreneur, um, just creating a network in which people can help a lot of people and where we are sharing information around cutting edge technologies that are out there to help people on their cellular level. So with that being said, thank you for joining us at Somerville Media Center.